What is going on guys, this video today is going to be my NXT TakeOver Brooklyn number 4 review. Of course, TakeOver Brooklyn was last night, I know this video is going up a little late on the uh, late afternoon on Sunday. Uh, SummerSlam is only a couple hours away pretty much because of the kickoff, but you know, better late than never, right? And you know, I'd like to just think of that philosophy and think, you know, at least somebody's coming to my channel to watch this. So, even if it goes up a little later than I would like it to, oh well. But TakeOver Brooklyn was last night, like I said, overall, he had another great TakeOver. Um, from NXT. I will say I don't think it was on the par of Chicago and New Orleans, but those takeovers were were so fucking like untouchable practically. And this is still like that's not a knock against this show saying it wasn't up to par of those because this was still a great show. I enjoyed every match, thought all of them were great. Um, but still like, you know, I, I just, I'm just throwing that out there. But still like, like I said, not a knock against Brooklyn, but Overall, like I said, still thought it was a great show. Um, so let's just get right in. We had the opening match with the NXT Tag Team Championships. Once again, the uh, uh, this is the third time out of the four takeovers this year that the uh, tag titles have opened up the show. Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roger Strong defending against Mustache Mountain, Tyler Bate, and Trent Seven. Um, what a fucking way to kick off the show. I mean, uh, I don't know if this would, I'd say this is the match of the night. And, like, for me personally, I think Adam Cole or Ricochet would take the cake for that. Um, for, like, my personal match of the night, because obviously everyone has their own opinions, but... This was still a phenomenal match. I mean, Trent Seven and Tyler Bate. I I'm, I'm I don't want to say I'm shocked they didn't win the tag titles, but just like they have like these guys are just so fucking awesome. <laughs> the team like I don't even know like I that feel like that's a very vague way of putting it. But like some of the, like the just the counters and the little things that these guys do in the ring, um, and just you know the offense that these guys do. It's just like so freaking fun to watch. And some of it's just so it's such, some of it is such like little stuff. Um, like, like Tyler Bates, like, you know, whoever, like, like his foot getting caught and he uses his other foot to not, you know, knock it out of the, you know, whoever's hands it was or something, like, little shit like that that was happening throughout the match. I just love stuff like that, uh, that these guys do. And obviously, you know, play, other guys do it as well, but, like, Tyler Bates and Trent Seven are just so good at, like, making everything matter in the ring. And Kyler Riley and Roger Strong, my God, are they, they, I, like, I love the team of Bobby Fish and Kyler Riley, but O'Reilly and Strong have really come in to their own, even, not, not that they were ever, like, you know, weird as a team, but, like, really come into their own is just a fucking awesome tag team. Like I said, love Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly as a team, but definitely it was, I think, in my opinion, a great choice when, you know, they had Roger turn and uh, join the Undisputed Era, because Roddy and uh, O'Reilly teaming together has just been awesome. I mean, an awesome match back in Chicago against Oni and Danny, and now this time around against Tyler Bate and Trent Seven. It, like, this match was just so much fun, and there's several attempts where, I, like, I predicted Mustache Mountain that we're, um, we're gonna win. Obviously, I was wrong. Um, there were several times throughout the match where I thought they had it. Um, of course, that did not happen. And several times throughout the match that I thought Undisputed Era were gonna win, and, you know, Trent Seven, Tyler Bate kept fighting, kept the match going. But one thing I do want to point out, like I said, I always say in my uh, review videos, I'm not very good sometimes at remembering specific spots and whatnot. Um, but, you know, I just kind of, you know, have an overall thought of the matchup. But one thing I do want to point out that I do remember about this match is one thing that I really liked was the callback to their second match that they did. Um, Tyler Bay had, was locked in a submission by, I think, O'Reilly, I want to say. And then, um, yeah, it was O'Reilly. Uh, Trent Seven goes to the outside, gets gets the towel, because remember in the second match, Tyler Bate threw in the towel to save his partner, Trent Seven, from, you know, suffering a, you know, further injury in the match, that's how they lost the tag title, so Trent Seven almost had to do it to Tyler Bate, he didn't want to, he was just about to throw it, the, throw, um, throw it in the ring, throw it in the towel, and call the match, and then he, he stopped himself, and then he said, fuck it, threw it in the crowd, um, and kept the match going, and then Tyler Bate got out of it uh, moments later, I think Roderick Strong actually ran at Trent Seven after that, and Seven had to go, you know, set him flipping out of the ring, so that was cool, but I loved that moment during the match, I loved little callbacks like that um because it just you know reminds you of the story that's in play um that's led to the match and during the match itself but all in all i remember tyler bay hitting the ropes turning around to a nasty knee i think it was from a uh, roderick or you know whoever it was but um point is undisputed era end up um laying out trend seven i believe they pinned seven and um got the win so the undisputed era kyler riley and roger strong retain the nxt tag team titles um, no problem, like, with them being champs, I just thought Mustache Mountain was going to win, but, you know, no problems, like I said, I absolutely love Unspeed Era, O'Reilly and Stronger have come into their own, like I said, it's such a great tag team, so, they're still the tag team champions, and after the matchup, they went to a replay, came back to the replay, um, the camera's on O'Reilly and Strong in the ring, and then War Raiders, Hanson and Rowe, rise from, um, you know, uh, um, behind them, excuse me, and, um, completely lay out the Unspeed Era, fucking just annihilating these guys, I'm going to make, um, later this week, or, you know, well, next week, technically, but I mean, um, uh, a live experience video slash, you know, re results review, whatever it's going to be called of the NXT live event that I went to on Saturday night, or Friday night, excuse me, and 
that uh, to, to give a little brief thing like I forgot how awesome these guys were like hands in the row. I only saw them live once and obviously you know I've seen their handful of matches that they've had on you know NXT television but I mean I've, I've literally forgot how great these guys were because after Saturday or after Friday night the live event seeing what these guys can do and just seeing the just seeing the beat down these guys did on on Undisputed Era like I'm, I'm so excited to see these guys get into a higher point in NXT fighting for those tag titles like them they laid them out it was awesome and um yeah, I'm just definitely looking forward to seeing War Raiders versus uh, Undisputed Era very, very soon. But moving on, we have EC3 versus the Velveteen Dream. Um, I will say, not as good as I thought it was going to be, but still a really good match. Like, I, I for some reason thought, like, we we're it's going to be a lot better. But, like, I hate, I also hate saying that because I think people think that, like, oh, I thought the match was bad because I didn't at all. I, I still did enjoy the match. I just was kind of slow at points and did take a little bit to pick up. Um, but still, overall, I did, you know, really enjoy it. Um, and, you know, the two things that stick out the most for me is obviously EC3 got, it like, a busted eye or whatever. But on Velveteen Dream ended up hitting his, um, whatever, like, a D the, the flipping DVD, whatever that thing's called, um, on the apron, which was sick. And then followed it up with an elbow, um, from the top rope to the apron on EC3, um, rain, whatever he calls it, the Rainmaker elbow or something like that. Um, so that was awesome to, you know, very, it was a variation of what we've seen, obviously, but just this time was on the apron, so that was cool. And I believe right after that was the finish for Velveteen Dream defeating EC3. So, like I said, overall, I th did think it was a good match, but, um, just surprised that, um, not surprised, but I mean, I just thought it was going to be, like, a lot better. But it was still a really good match, so I don't, so, you know, don't, don't dwell on the fact that I said I thought it would be better, just, you know, I still thought it was really good, and, uh, obviously, Velveteen Dream's tights and, you know, his whole thing of, you know, call me Vince on the back of his tights were, uh, great and, uh, whatnot. I was honestly surprised Velveteen Dream won. I honestly thought EC3 was gonna win, and, you know, I honestly think we were gonna be seeing Velveteen Dream head up to the main roster soon, but, I mean, you know, it remains to be seen. I don't know if EC3 is gonna go to the main roster, or if, you know, they just really wanted to put Velveteen Dream over here, um, instead of three, because, you know, Velveteen Dream, when it comes to the bigger matches on TakeOver, um, is always lost. I mean, Black, he lost, uh, lost the ladder match and lost to Ricochet, so, I mean, I don't know, I for some reason thought he was going to uh, lose here again and then, you know, make his way up. But I guess I wanted to give him the win here, and what happens from here remains to be seen. But um, I believe it was after this match, or it might have been after the uh, um, next match, but I mean, I don't know what it was. But the uh, point is, I, um, they ended up showing um, the King of Bros, Matt Riddle, in the crowd. Of course, Matt Riddle recently signed with the, um, the WWE. He was obviously in New York um, for NXT and wrestled at a Game Changer Wrestling night before. Um, and I don't know if he's, I think that's it for the weekend for him. But, I mean, they showed him in the crowd. Obviously, he recently signed um, with NXT, like I said. So, that was cool to see him. Can't wait to see what he does in NXT. Um, I'm, I'm forgetting the order of the matches here. I forget if the North America title was next or if he was the women's title. I think it was the North America title. Um, so, the NXT North America Championship match. Adam Cole defending against um, the King, the one and only Ricochet. Um, my match of the night, like I mentioned earlier, um, I absolutely love this match. Ricochet shined like the bright star he is, proving that he is probably the best high flyer in the world, at least in my opinion, I think he is. Um, Adam Cole being great, because Adam Cole is always great. Um, I just, I fucking love both these guys, and these guys freaking tore the house down in Brooklyn, like I said, my match of the night. And I think a lot of people will agree. Like, the tag title match was awesome. Um, you know, the last man standing was great as well. Um, but I think this one was just, just so good. Like, Ricochet, like I said, just, you know, shined so bright throughout this match. Like, you know, proving, you know, that he is the best high flyer, like I said. And just, you know, so many big moves from him. Freaking 630s and Hurricanes to the outside. And Adam Cole jumped for a leapfrog. And Ricochet drop kicked him out of the midair, which was awesome. Um, just, a, you know, numerous other, you know, um, high-flying maneuvers from Ricochet just, just were just sick. And, of course, Adam Cole, you know, like I said, being Adam Cole and just wanting to keep him, you know, grounded throughout the matchup and whatnot, and still being Adam Cole being great, um, hitting a lot of his big moves. I remember Ricochet springboarded off the ropes, and um, Adam Cole caught him in a backbreak, or, you know, like the Carlito backbreaker, so that was cool um, match, um, maneuver there. And uh, like I said, not, not as many near falls that I, I remember about this match, but I know there was definitely a couple times where I thought Adam Cole was going to retain the title, but obviously he didn't. Um, so in the end, it was Ricochet hitting the 630 and pinning Adam Cole to become the new NXT North American champion. I'm um, very happy that Ricochet is the champ. I love Adam Cole, but I think it was definitely, I don't want to say it was time for a change, but I thought, you know, it was definitely more to gain from Ricochet here winning than, you know, Ricochet losing and then winning it down the line or something like that. So I'm glad Ricochet just won his first attempt on a big show like Brooklyn, like I said. Um, so happy for Ricochet that he won the title. Um, I think Adam Cole honestly will probably end up moving up to the NXT title pretty soon. Because I don't think, you know, I don't think they're just going to call up, like, Adam Cole or something like that. I think when all those guys come up, they're all, you know, the Undisputed Era will all go to the main roster together. So, I don't see any of that happening. You know, they're still uh, tag champs. I think Adam Cole is just going to probably move up to the 
Um, NXT title eventually, like I said, but still, Ricochet is the new North American champion. Absolutely love that match, my match of the night. NXT Women's Championship match, NXT Women's Champion uh, Shayna Baszler defending against Kyrie Sane. Um, one thing I do want to note about this match, I definitely saw a couple of spots and you know moments throughout the match that I saw the night before at the live event. So that was kind of cool, which made me think like they were using that match at the live event to kind of work some stuff out um, for TakeOver Brooklyn. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, it was a good match. Not um, not a. Uh, I mean, eh, it was kind of it was a really good match. I don't want to say it was a great match. Like I really really enjoyed it, but I still think it was a really good match. I mean, there was definitely um, moments throughout the match. Um, where I thought it was good, thought it was going to be it. Shayna Baszler was going to win. Um, I really didn't see um, Kyrie Sane winning that all that much. I mean, I thought there was a chance, but like I thought they were going to have Shayna win here, and then maybe Kyrie wins at um, you know, Evo at the Evolution pay per view in October, or if they really want to stretch it out, um, you know, at the next Takeover or Survivor Series weekend or whatever. But that's what I thought. Um, but like I said, so there wasn't many um moments throughout the match where I thought Kyrie Sane was going to win, but Shayna Baszler, I thought she was definitely had Kyrie Sane put away a couple of times, which obviously Kyrie Sane kept fighting back, kept fighting back, and then in the end, I think, because um, Kyrie Sane had uh, Shayna in a like, submission for you know a moment, and then Shayna switched out in, like, a, in uh, her chokehold or whatever, and I thought that was going to be it, but Kyrie ended up um, getting out of it, and I believe um, the finish was Shayna going for the chokehold, and Kyrie kind of flipping out of it into a pin, so Shayna, you know, was kind of stuck in her submission, and Kyrie was pinning her. So one, two, three. Kyrie Sane becomes a new NXT champion. I personally loved the finish. I thought it made, you know, Kyrie got the title, and Shayna doesn't look weak in defeat. So I thought, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. Um, so I, I like the finish. I don't know how other people felt about it. You, you know, was Kyrie, is Kyrie Sane getting that fluke victory over Shayna? So we'll definitely, I think, get a rematch. Um, they'll probably just do it on NXT TV or, you know, maybe the Evolution pay per view. I don't know. But I personally like the finish. No problem with Kyrie Sane winning the title. I just didn't see her winning it. But, you know, happy for her. Happy she won the title. Um, and, you know, what, what, the, what, what goes down from here remains to be seen. But um, moving on, we have the main event. Of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn number four is the NXT Championship last man standing match. Johnny Gargano versus champion um, Tommaso Ciampa. Um, third match of this rivalry, in my opinion, um, the weakest match of this rivalry. Not in a bad way, though. Once again, that's like like how I said earlier. I think Brooklyn wasn't on par um, to you know, New Orleans and Chicago, but not in a bad way. It was just those two other matches, like have been so fucking amazing, and I did think this was a great match, I just, I don't think it was on the par of, of those two, and that's not a bad thing, because it was still a great match, like, I could still go back, you know, if I wanted to, and, you know, watch the New Orleans match, watch the Chicago match, and I would watch this match as well, because I did think it was really good, um, had plenty of, you know, good moments throughout the match, callbacks, um, spots and whatnot, and I do think, you know, they were, they do kind of, not said, not had, you know, the handcuffs on, got, kind of got held back a little bit, um, in the case where, you know, if they would have, had the triple threat match, you know, with, originally with Aleister Black, and then were able to do their blow off and say, uh, you know, the war or war games takeover or whatever it's going to be, and at Survivor Series weekend they would have had more time to build up, you know, more stuff to lead into that matchup. And obviously this feud's been going for over a year now. The point is, you know, they would have had more time to, you know, do those little things to add in there, like Johnny Gargano, um, the finish to this matchup, which we'll talk about, like you know, over Tommaso Ciampa did that same thing to Gargano, um, you know, hitting a running knee and smashing Gargano's head on the stage at full sail. So you know, they, they, there was the callbacks like that, but I do think that if they would have had more time to build up this match and not just had to quickly change it to a one-on-one -on -one instead of the triple threat, they would have had more time to build up that little stuff to add into this matchup, um, which isn't a knock, like I said, because they still still have you know the callbacks in this matchup, which I do love throughout you know trilogy matches like this and. Um, and just big time matches in general. Just did had some really cool spots as well. I'm trying to remember a few. I do, and they're not going to be in any order. Um, but you know, Johnny Gargano, Super King, Tommaso Champa through the uh, tables at ringside is very cool. Um, Champa early on in the matchup hitting you know whatever this move's called and dropping Gargano through the uh, one and out table to the other um, was also a cool spot as well. Um, Champa ended up taking out the ring canvas again, exposing the wood. But this time it was Gargano DDT and Champa on it. So um, that was a nice you know reverse of what we got in Chicago. Um, Gargano ended up accidentally super king the timekeeper, which right after Champ, I believe, laid out Gargano. And then it was like bing, bang, boom, like three things happened at once. Like Gargano laid out the timekeeper. I think Champ laid out Gargano. And then Champ comes running out Gargano with a chair, running knee. They both go through the barricade. And then, like, right after that, Champ started, like, th threw the timekeeper on him, threw the barricade on him, was just trying to throw a bunch of shit on Gargano to keep him down, but he obviously didn't. Um, at least at that point. And I'm um, trying to think of some other stuff here. I mean, they brought in the handcuffs this time, which Champa had them on for, like, it seemed like 10 minutes, or at least had one of them on. Um, they were just kind of dangling there for, like I said, it seemed like 10 minutes. But, I mean, so he had those going on. And I'm sure there's some other stuff as well that I, obviously I'm forgetting. But, I mean, for the third match in the Gargano and Champa feud, 
Um, I really loved it. I thought it was great. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll just take it to the finish. So obviously these guys start battling up towards the stage. Gargano ends up handcuffing Ch uh, Tommaso Ciampa to the edge of the stage and um, just beating him down, beating him down. Um, Ciampa's, you know, he's kind of able to get up. You know, he's ble he's pleading with Gargano, saying he's sorry, and Gargano's not having any of it. He's beating the shit out of Tommaso Ciampa. Super kicks, running knees, and then goes for one final running knee. Um, I believe he exposed his knee, um, like took down the knee pad and whatnot. Runs at Tommaso Ciampa. I believe he hit him with the knee, or I don't remember if he like actually did hit him with the knee or if Champa moved, but Gargano runs at Champa, whether he hits him or he doesn't, and then just his momentum takes him, he kind of runs off the stage pretty much and hits a like one of those, you know, electrical boxes. Gargano goes flipping down to the, you know, uh, concrete or whatever below, and Gargano's laid out. So Gargano and Champa are both laid out, the ref's counting, and right at the count of nine, Tommaso Champa rolls off the stage and is able to stand up for the count of ten. So Tommaso Champa defeats Johnny Gargano to retain the NXT Championship in the last man standing match, and I know some people hated the finish of the match. Um, me personally, I liked it because if you really think about it, Gargano's wanted to take out Tommaso Champa so much that he, he you know, it, it took over his mind. He wasn't even thinking, if you really think about it story-wise, like, it was like he was even thinking about the NXT title at that point. He was thinking, I'm going to not literally, but he's like, I'm going to effing murder this guy. Like, you know, not literally, but you know what I mean? Like, so he just runs at Tommaso Champa because he wants to take him out so bad. And if his own mistake costs him, just like it did in Chicago. Like, him wanting to beat up Tommaso Champa so bad, cost him the match. Champa was able to, you know, catch him with the DDT on the on the ring and was able to lay him out. And that's what cost him in Chicago. And his, it was his own fault this time, once again, him running at Champa. And whether I forget if he hit him or if he didn't, that's besides the point, though. And then his own momentum from wanting to take out... Champa just ended up taking himself out as well, and it's just like, if you really think about it story-wise, and Gargano after the match was just like sitting on the stage, just like, what the fuck? And Champa's just, you know, in the background holding up the title, like, that's crazy. I thought it was, I thought it was a great ending. I know some people said it kind of ended takeover on a sour note, and obviously, like, it, anytime a heel does, and you know, Gargano's just sitting there all sad. Like, I, I do get that. Like, it kind of didn't end on a, you know, takeover didn't end on like a high note, new champion or anything like that. It was just like Gargano's just sitting on the stage, like, dude, that really fucking just happened. And Tommaso Champ is just in the background holding up his title. But you know, I personally liked the ending. Like I said, I thought it added to the whole story of Gargano wanting to beat the shit out of Tommaso Champion, but uh, Champa. Excuse me, but in the end, Tommaso Champa was still able to sneak away with the NXT title. So I thought it was a great last man standing matchup. That um, was overall a great uh, main event and over an overall great NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. So leave your thoughts in the comment section below what you thought of TakeOver Brooklyn. Overall, like I said, I thought it was a great show. thought every match had something to offer. Um, and, you know, to run that, like the tag team match was great. It was amazing. EC3 or Velveteen Dream was, you know, really good, I, th I thought. Um, it was good, uh, you know. Um, and we had uh, Adam Cole Ricochet. It was my match of the night. Um, Kyrie Sane and Shane Baszler was a real good match. And then uh, the main event was, uh, you know, another uh, another classic um, by Gargano and Champa, in my opinion. So, um, leave your guys thoughts, like I said, on Taker Brooklyn in the comment section below. I'll definitely check them out. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe. SummerSlam tonight, rocking my Ronda Rousey shirt. So, I'll either be back late tonight or early tomorrow with my SummerSlam review. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.